Hello everyone. So welcome to Kirti Tutorials. So today we are going to do the analysis of Section A of Class 12th Applied My Sample Paper, which has been issued by the board for the coming year that is 2023-24. So today we are going to do the analysis of Section A. And as we all know, Section A comprises of 20 questions in all and out of which 18 will be MCQs of one mark each and two will be assertion reason based questions and they will be also of one mark each so in all section a is for how many marks 20 marks so now we are going to do the analysis what pattern they have set from which unit they have given how many questions and all so that it will be easy for you to study for the exams so if we come to the first question it's based on the first unit and it is simply based on understanding and it's an easy question which is based on congruence modulo. So now the question is the value of minus 70 mod 13 is what? So if we have to find the value of minus 70 mod 13, we have to simply find it out the remainder. Right? So now remainder is what? Minus 70. We have to find B. Which number is to be subtracted from minus 70 to get it a multiple of 13? So we have to divide it by 13. Correct? So now what number should be subtracted? So as we all know, minus 70. First number kya hota hai mara? 65. And then we have after 65, 78. So what should be my B? My B should be minus. The number should be minus 78. So my B should be 8. Right? So that is how we give it. So the value of minus 70 mod 13 is going to be 8. That is what should be your remainder if you are dividing minus 70 by 13. Mod is nothing but minus 70 divided by 13. So as we know that positive multiples are 65 and 78 but your x that is minus 70 that is less than 0 and your y is greater than 0. Then therefore the remainder will come out to be 8. Right, so it's a simple question which will hardly take few seconds to do in exam. So on an average, if we take one minute also, it will take just not more than that. Correct? So it's a simple question based, no calculation, nothing as such needed. Right? Now, if you come to the next question, it is again based on the same unit, but from the topic numerical inequalities. Now, here you have to solve it. So it's evaluation based basically. So solving the linear inequality means it's just like solving the equations. Now, if we come to linear inequalities, now it seems to be a simple question which can be solved easily. But there is a small trick in this question. If I simply say x plus 1 upon x plus 2 is greater than equal to 1. And if I simply solve it by cross multiplying it, that is if I multiply both sides by x plus 2, then xx will get cut. Then you get the answer ma'am. 1 is greater than equal to 2. That cannot be the answer, right? So this is not what we have to do. What we have to do is a very simple trick has to be applied. Now, what is it? X plus 1 upon X plus 2 minus 1 is greater than or equal to 0. Now, if I take the LCM, what will it be? X plus 2. So on solving it, what do we get? We get simply this. Now, again, X and X will get cut. And if I take again X plus 2 or the other, other side, it will become 0. But that is what we have to avoid. So what we have to do is, we have to simply solve and now guess what we have to do. Now we have to find the conditions that what could be the values of x so that my answer comes greater than or equal to 0 and that will be our final answer. So for x plus 2 minus 1 upon x plus 2, we have to find the condition for x plus 2 so that our entire fraction becomes greater than or equal to 0. So now upper numerator we have negative number. So if in denominator also we have negative number, then only we can make it greater than 0. And that's an important point here. So now here the point is x plus 2 has to be what? It has to be less than 0. Two negatives make it positive. So if x plus 2 is less than 0, then minus 1 upon x plus 2 will be greater than 0. So just do not cross multiply it. It will give you wrong answer and you will be confused. Right, so what we have to do is we have to use the conditions that if a numerator is negative and the answer has to come greater than zero, then our denominator has to be less than zero. 
Now, from this simple equation, you have to find the value of x. So, now this gives you x is less than minus 2. So, we have to mark out the option where x is less than minus 2. So, which is that option? For x is less than minus 2, we have this. We will not use the first option because there we have square brackets. Square brackets means minus 2 is included. But now what is the condition? X plus 2 has to be. It has to be less than 0, not equal to. Equal to we will remove because alpha I put it equal to, then it will be giving you answer 2, which will be wrong. Minus 2, agar humne, simply if we have x ko 0, rakh diya, then we will not be able to get the answer. So now it is x is less than equal to minus 2. So therefore, it becomes infinite than if I put it minus 2. So now the answer will be minus infinity to minus 2 where minus 2 is not included. So this needs a little bit of thinking and understanding also. Right? So that is evaluation based but it involves thinking skills also. And you should know the properties of linear inequalities also. Right? Now the third one if I take it, the next one. The next one is which of the following is a statistic. That's a simple question which is based on remembering the concept, remembering the terms. So statistic word is used for sample, right? So for sample, we use the word statistic. As you all know, population ke liye, we use the word parameter. So now tell me out of the four options, which option is for samples? Yes, very true. Only the B option is for sample. This is sample mean. So therefore, this will be your option. So no solving, nothing, just remembering based. You have to simply remember the concept of statistic. Right? So that is what we have. Now, if we come to the next one, next one says, in one sample test, the estimation for population mean is. So that is for the estimation. Again, it's a formula-based question. So just think from the statistics unit, that is inferential statistic, they have covered two questions and which are theoretical-based. Third and fourth, both are based on inferential statistic unit. Right? So please go through the formula list, go through the theory part very nicely, everyone to score well in exam. So now what do we have? It's formula based simply. So the formula, as you all know, it is the first option, which is sample mean minus population mean upon standard deviation upon square root of sample size. So that gives you the simple answer. So again, it's based on remembering of the formula. No solving, no evaluation, nothing. Right? So if I come to the next now, it's again based on the first unit, that is numerical application. Already first and second question were from there. And third question, that is fifth question now, is also from the same unit. And third and fourth question were from inferential statistic. Now, this is the question which is based on boats and streams, right? So, it will be solved simply using the formula of speed is equal to distance upon time and as well as upstream and downstream speeds. So downstream speed is given by x plus y as you all know and x minus y is given by upstream speed. You can even see my video based on both and stream for more clarity. Now here the important point is the time ratio. As we all know that time is inversely proportional to the speed. Now here time is given to you that it takes him twice as long to row up as to go down the stream. So upstream may it took more time. So if T1 I take the time for upstream and suppose T2 I take the time for downstream. So here also I will have to change downstream, upstream. Now what's the ratio of upstream and downstream? Upstream time is double, right? So 2 by 1. So speed ka ratio ho jata hai 1 by 2. So what will I get? If I take the ratio as k, right? Simple concept. No run, learning of the formula, just simple concept. So x plus y will be what? 2k. And x minus y will be what? k. What is x here? Speed of the boat in still water, which is already given to you as 6. Just remember, very carefully see it. Speed of the still water is x. We have taken and it is given 6. What we have to find? We have to find y. Right? k is simply a ratio factor nothing else right 2k k so now if i simply add the two equations what will i get 2x is equal to 3k so x is 3k upon 2 now x is already given to you 6 let's substitute this value 
So 6 is equal to 3 upon 2 k. Now we, have, we are finding that factor k. Okay, so now what will you get? K as 4. Now it's become a very, very simple question now. So what will you get the equations as? You will get the equations as x plus y is 8 and x minus y is 4. Now x is already 6. Let's replace it with 6. Now everyone can do y in a minute. So the important thing here is y will come out to be 2. So what's your answer? Again, A option is correct. That y, that is the speed of the boat in the upstream and downstream. We also count the speed of the stream or the water current. And that comes out to be 2 km per hour. No new formula. I repeat again. X plus y is downstream speed. X minus y is upstream speed. Time and speed are always inversely proportional. That's very important for you. So if time ratio is 2 is to 1, then speed ratio becomes 1 is to 2. Right? So x plus y is equal to 2k and x minus y is equal to k. Now x is already given 6. Find k. So k comes out to be 4 and therefore y is 2. Right? So simple understanding of the concept. Nothing else. Right? So this is based on boats and streams. Now let's take one more question. Now the other question says which is on the probability chapter and from there it is based on binomial distribution. Simply random distribution also you can say binomial also. So now when a coin is tossed twice. Now we have to find the number of heads when a coin is tossed twice then mathematical expectation of x. See the point here is if you know the concept of binomial distribution then also you can do it very easily. And if you don't know that, you can do it with random distribution also. Correct? So for random distribution, we will have to make the table. I'll tell you both the ways here. So x, px. Now, different cases. So 0 times head, 1 times head, and 2 times head we can get. 0 times head aane ka probability, how many outcomes can be? hh, tt, th, ht. Now 0 times head means tt is your favor. So, which is 1 by 4. 1 time head means TH and HT are your favor, which is 1 by 2. And 2 times head means only one option, that is HS, which is 1 by 4. Now, what's the formula for expectation? Expectation says PI, XI. Right? And then adding up. So, what will you get on 0 into 1 by 4? 0. 1 into 1 by 2? 1 by 2. 2 into 1 by 4, that is again 1 by 2. So 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 is 1. This is with the random distribution. Now, if I give you a very simple concept, if you know binomial, this will also be the case of binomial distribution, which will give you an answer a little easier way. So binomial distribution, why is it? Because head ka probability will never change. It will always be 1 by 2. So now if you get the formula for mean of binomial distribution, what will you get? NP is expected value of x or the mean in binomial distribution. So now what is n? So n is 2. What is p? p is probability of success. So what is the probability of getting head? That is 1 by 2. So that comes out simple answer 1. So this is time saving. That is if you use binomial. But don't worry if you don't understand binomial then you can do with simple random distribution table as well. So then also you will get the same answer. So if you remember the formula and if you substitute the values, you get the answer. So it is a simple question which is based on the concept of probability. And then in that probability chapter, it is based on random distribution table and you have to find the mean, right? So sample size is given two and then you have to find the expected value of getting head, right? So this is what we did, the first six questions from the section A. So this will be your part one. Rest will be continuing in the next video. That is part two, right? Hope you all understand it well. Okay, thank you everyone.